Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for the great things you are doing. Thank you for the joy of the Lord from all these who are giving testimonies. Testimonies there, testimonies in every region, every state, and every country. Lord, you have done a lot for us this year. We give the glory to you, accept our praises in Jesus' name. And Lord, here we are again. You still want to bless us. And I pray that your blessings will come upon all your people without any hindrance or interruption in jesus name take us over lord take us over i will pray lord that all the desires of every heart you will fulfill in jesus name we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray thank you very much we're coming back to mark mark chapter 6 mark chapter 6 and i'm reading from verse 47 all through to verse 56 mark chapter 6 reading from verse 47 and when the evening was calm the sheep was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land. Here is another situation again. A different situation. But it is still describing the storms of life. And this one, we're going to look at Christ's power over all the storms of life. Christ's power over all the storms of life. Verse 48, and he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he comes unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. Verse 49, but when they saw him, Walking upon the sea, they supposed it had been a spirit, and they cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them, and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Every form of fear in your life, from this moment on, the Lord will stop everything. Yeah. Verse 51, and he went up unto them, into the sheep, and the wind ceased. And they were so amazed in themselves, beyond measure, and wondered, for they considered not the miracle of the laws for their heart was hardened and when they had passed over they came into the land of Genezaret and drew to the shore and when they were come out of the ship straight way they knew him and ran through that whole region round about and began to carry about in beds those that were sick where they heard he was and whithersoever he entered into villages or cities or country they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch if it were the border of his garment and as many as touched him were made whole you'll be made whole christ's power we we'll see here again over all the storms of life 
here this storm took place in the dark it was in the night the lord had left them in the boat and he said go ahead and he went apart to pray and it says in the fourth watch of the night the jewish people divided the night into four parts actually starting from six in the evening until six the following morning the first watch six to nine the second watch nine to twelve the third watch twelve to three a.m and the fourth watch the final one before morning breaks out from 3 a.m to 6 a.m and we're told at this time that as they were on the sea a storm arose and the lord jesus came to them in the fourth watch that will be the final watch starting from 3 a.m pitch dark and because of the darkness and the storm they couldn't find their way this was a storm of satanic origin as christ was away from these disciples the devil decided i'll sink them i'll drown them i'll destroy them before he gets to them but the lord is watching over you i said the lord is watching over you nothing will sink your boat nothing will drown your family and nothing will destroy you in jesus name you see there are different storms of life in the case of jonah it was a storm of his own making and yet the lord delivered him for the people the sailors that were sailing with jonah it was a storm that came on them as a wrong of as a result of wrong association they wouldn't have experienced that storm you know why it not for their association with the prodigal prophet or the runaway prophet with jonah there are some people that have jonas in their places your family somebody is running contrary to the lord and you are sheltering that jonah running contrary to the lord and you bring a storm on your life not because of yourself but because of the jonah that is running contrary to the will of god and you are harboring there sometimes it's your company your place of work you have established this by all the capital you have and then you bring somebody in who is running away from the lord a jonah because of that wrong association you have the storm over your life sometimes it's the result of a wrong counsel it's in acts chapter 27 that paul the apostle was there in that ship the captain of the ship was also there and the centurion who was directing the whole voyage paul the apostle gave the right counsel but the captain of the ship gave another counsel and the centurion decided to follow the captain of the ship eventually ran into a storm and paul the apostle said we could have avoided this this storm is because of wrong counseling at other times osia tells us you sow the wind and you reap wild wind that means you sow something evil and the result is that there is a storm but how we thank god that god is a merciful god merciful as well as mighty and whatever storm may be in our lives of satanic origin of personal consequence of wrong association of wrong counseling of the wrong way of life the lord will bring a solution to the problem today in jesus name christ's power over all the storms of life 
three things we're going to consider number one a progressive path through the storm a progressive path through the storm in spite of the storm despite the storm even though the storm is there the progress god has appointed you to make in life you will make that progress in jesus name now it's uh, so important that as you are here you're not here by accident it should be a man of purpose a woman of purpose that this period we're having when the lord himself is coming to come all the storms of life that you make yourself available to the lord and say i'm still going to go through life through the progressive path even though the storm is there a progressive path to the storm number two the powerful presence of the savior the powerful presence of the savior the moment the savior comes in is the master of storm master of sea master of wind master over the ocean the powerful presence of the savior will solve every problem and yours tonight will not be an exception your problems are solved number three is prevailing power over all sicknesses and it doesn't matter we are the people that make a difference between cancer and hiv and tuberculosis and kidney failure and lungs packing up and large heart and blindness and paralysis he does not make any difference to him all sicknesses are curable he will cure you his prevailing power over all sicknesses number one a progressive path through the storm the question is how can you make progress in spite of the storm despite the storm how can you still make progress in your life i just read it to you now from mark chapter 6 look at that again verse 47 mark chapter 6 from verse 47 and when the even was come the sheep was in the midst of the sea and he alone on the land and he saw them toiling and rowing and but for the wind was contrary unto them about the fourth watch of the night he cometh unto them walking upon the sea he even though there was no boast there's nothing impossible for him and these wonders he'll perform in your life he will walk over the sea of your life and then it says he would have passed by he would have passed by he would have passed by many people do not stop the lord he just goes on his way but if you'll cry unto him if you beckon unto him if you ask him lord i am here i'm passing through this i'm passing through that it will stop and give you appropriate attention i want an amen there yeah. but when they saw him walking upon the sea they supposed it had been a spirit and he cried out they supposed they supposed how many people by supposition have ruined their own lives they supposed i thought i supposed he didn't like me i supposed he is a spirit i suppose he is an enemy let suppositions die down this new year live without suspicion did you hear what i said live without suspicion supposition sub, sub, uh, suspicion i think i thought i feel i imagine you will make your friend an enemy by supposition you will make your lord the savior a spirit
by supposition your life can become upside down by supposition and your helper you make a hinderer out of him your developer you make a destroyer out of him by supposition no supposition no suspicion it goes on to say for they all saw him and they were troubled and immediately he talked with them and said unto them be of good cheer it is i be not afraid it is i be not afraid you will not be afraid how will the problems of life be solved isaiah chapter 40 isaiah chapter 40 reading from verse 27 isaiah 40 verse 27 why sayest thou o jacob why speakest thou o israel my way is hid from the lord and my judgment is passed over from my god when they were in the ship they couldn't see jesus in the in this in the fourth watch it was so dark even though christ was coming they took him for his spirit and they had some position in their mind i heard what he said i suppose he's talking about me i listen to what he said i imagine that must be me supposition why are you talking like that why are you hindering yourself then it now shows us verse 28 has thou not heard has thou not known has thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth faithes not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. There is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. Because of the journey and because of the roughness of the road, you are fainting already. And the Lord gives power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. From tonight, your strength will increase. All the load you are supposed to carry, that's not the load that Satan has given. Whatever load Satan has given, we're going to get rid of that in Jesus' name. I mean, the responsibilities the Lord is laying upon your shoulders. It will give you strength to carry it in Jesus' name. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mount up with wings as eagles no mountain will stop you anymore no ocean will stop you anymore and no hurdle will stop you anymore it will give you the wings of an eagle you will fly over your problem over your mountains over your ocean over your hindrances have you ever seen an eagle flying in the air this, they go so high that if any man will stretch up the hand to catch that eagle, impossible because the eagle is flying at such a great height. The Lord will give you the wings of an eagle. You'll be so high, the hands of your enemy will never reach you. And it says, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. That's how you are going to make progress in life. Anytime you sense weakness is coming, wait on the Lord. Anytime you think the enemy might be having an upper hand, 
just take time apart wait on the lord anytime there's confusion in your life and it appears the promises the lord had made in the past they are not being fulfilled wait on the lord anytime it appears that the medical examination is saying something of bringing confusion in your mind all you need to do wait on the lord anytime the winds are blowing contrary any times it appears the opposition is stronger than you can cope with just wait upon the lord anytime the family in the family circle this happened that happened that happened and they happen in quick succession i cannot understand this will they stop my journey will this destroy me what am i going to do just wait upon the lord anytime in your business anytime in your ministry it appears things are going contrary just wait upon the lord anytime it appears that god has given you a promise and it appears the promise is not being fulfilled and the progress you ought to make you're not seeing the progress wait upon the lord if you wait upon the Lord, they will renew your strength. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There's a miracle you have been waiting for in that appears. The miracle has not come. Spend some minutes and spend some hours. Wait upon the Lord. The miracle will happen. The miracle must happen. And your weakness will be turned to strength in Jesus' name. Point number two. The powerful presence of the Savior. The powerful presence of the Savior. We're looking at Mark chapter 6. Verses 50 and 51. Mark chapter 6, verse 15. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. He said, I'm your savior, be not afraid. I am your healer, be not afraid. I'm the peace for your life, be not afraid. I am the rest for your soul, be not afraid. I'm the builder of your home, the builder of your family, be not afraid. I'm the one that comes to calm every storm in your life, be not afraid. I'm the one that comes to silence all your enemies, be not afraid. I am the power inside you, in your life that will get you to your destination your destiny be not afraid it is i the one who called you it is i the one who saved you it is i the one who has a special interest over your life it is i be not afraid and he went verse 51 he went up unto them into the ship and the wind tell me Sees the wind sees. Look at John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Reading from verse 20 and verse 21. John chapter 6, verse 20. But he says unto them, It is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. The moment he came into the ship, they landed at the haven at the point they ought to land. Tonight, the Lord in a special way is coming into your life and he will land you where he has ordained prophesied predicted you're going to end up in Jesus name you will not stop your journey in the middle of the sea the storm will not stop you and draw you before you reach the shore 
you left that other shore you are getting to this other shore you will not sink in the middle of your journey of your voyage in jesus name this family the lord will take you to where he has appointed for you this brother this sister the lord will take you to the place he has appointed in jesus name I made reference to chapter 27 of Acts. Let's go there. Acts chapter 27. It's, uh, you, you read the whole chapter later yourself. But eventually, look at here from verse 20. Acts chapter 27. And I'm reading here from verse 20. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no and no no small tempest lay on us all hope that we should be saved was then taken away that's paul saying over there we shouldn't have moved but because of wrong counseling maybe you have been counseled wrongly Concerning business, concerning marriage, concerning family, concerning childbearing. Maybe somebody make, made a mistake, a professional made a mistake in your life. And the mistake is like it's costing you now your very life. Tonight, the Lord will reverse the effect of that mistake. And so in verse 21... But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not to have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the sheep for there was the reason for this now he said now be of good cheer everything will be all right and i come to tell you the same thing tonight be of good cheer in your life everything will be all right panicking fear anxiety worry about this about that forget about that you're going to go into a new inheritance in jesus name be of good cheer but why look at verse 22 and i now i exhort you to be of good cheer for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you there shall be no loss of any man's life among you where are the people and prophesying upon? There shall be no laws of any life among you in Jesus' name. As I see you today, I will see you again. As I see members of your family today, I'll see you again in Jesus' name. Verse 23, for they are stood by me this night that word for means because it says i'm telling you this because i'm telling you this for this reason they stood by me this night an angel of god whose i am and whom i serve saying fear not paul thou must be brought before caesar and lo god has given all them that sail with thee wherefore sirs be of good cheer for i believe god that it shall be even as it was told me from this passage i want you to write down seven things that because of this you know, there is no reason to fear or panic, be anxious or be worried in your life. You know that you will get to the end of the chapter. 
you will get to the end of the year you'll get to the end of the journey because of this passage before i come to that passage let me read to you the final verse final verse that is verse 44 and the rest some on boards some on broken pieces of the sheep and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land they escaped all safe to land they escaped how many of them all safe to the land we escape how many of us all safe to the land why how number one because of his presence with us his presence with us verse 23 for there stood by me this night the angel of god his presence with us there stood by me an angel of the lord because of that presence his name is emmanuel god with us lo i am with you always until the end of the world number one is presence with us number two is possession of us look at that verse 23 whose i am whose i am is possession of us you're, you're not just an individual you're not just like um, you know a deacon harry you're an important person you're a child of god because of his possession of us number one is presence with us number two is possession of us whose i am look at that verse again and whom i serve and whom i serve is program for me i don't have no plan of my own i serve him i have no program of my own i serve him i have nothing that i'm doing on earth except for him i'm his property i'm a servant and he has a plan for my life a project for me and because of that program project and plan it says whom i serve and that's why you are confident that because of your life because of the purpose of life that is the reason why you know you're going to get to the end of the journey there's a powerful presence of the savior in your life because of that you will not drown in the middle of your voyage in jesus name number one is presence with us number two is possession of us number three is program for us number four is purpose for us look at verse 24 saying fear not paul thou must be brought before caesar there is a must in your life a must and because of that must that's the reason you know that you are going to get there earlier the lord had told paul the apostle he said as you are born witness for me in jerusalem you must m-u-s-t there is a must you must bear witness of me in rome even when he was called the lord had said for this purpose i raised him up and i will show him the things he must suffer for my name's sake there is a must in your life his purpose for us number one because of his presence with me i reach there because of his possession of me i reach there because of his program for me i get there because of his purpose for me i get there look at that verse 24 again saying fear not paul thou must be brought before caesar and look god has given thee all that sail with thee it means that 
first of all you yourself you are protected and that means number five now because of his protection of me his protection of me it says you are protected and even the people that sail with you because of association with you paul i've given them to you i preserve them i protect them those who were associated with jonah got into trouble because jonah was walking contrary to the lord those who are associated with paul they got protection preservation because paul was at the center of the will of god because of his protection of us why because of his presence with you how because of his possession of you how because of his program for you how because of his purpose for you number five because of his protection of you look at that verse again verse 24 the latter part of that verse 24 there and lo god has given you all them that sail with thee there's a promise there because of his promise to us because of his promise to us and we know that when he promises he always fulfills because of his promise to us all the promises of god will be yes and amen in your life in jesus name look at verse 25 wherefore sirs be of good cheer wherefore sirs be of good cheer for i believe god that it shall be even as it was told me why because of his power over us because of his power over us do you see what the lord is saying do you see what the lord is assuring of us of his presence with us his possession of us his program for us his purpose for us his protection of us his promise to us his power over us isaiah chapter 63 isaiah chapter 63 it tells us is with us and because he is with us that's why we know i will reach my destination i will not stop my journey halfway how about you i said how about you isaiah chapter 63 verse 9 it tells us in all their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity he redeemed them and he bared them and carried them all the days of old his presence with us in first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 9 first peter chapter 2 verse 9 but here a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that he should show for us the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which one which in time past were not a people but now are the people of god now are the people of god his possession of us is present with us and he possesses us whom we serve look at john chapter 12 john chapter 12 he has a program for us and once you abide in that program you do not deviate you do not become a prodigal preacher a prodigal pastor a runaway preacher a runaway pastor like jonah and you stay 
with his program and project for you he has a definite thing for you to do in the kingdom and you abide in that project in that program then you're sure that because of that program with you and for you is going to see you through john chapter 12 verse 24 verily verily i say unto you except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die it abideth alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit he that loveth his life and then he wants to go on another project a yo-yo project a project that looks interesting and inviting but not of the lord a project that makes him abandon the project of the lord that the lord has earmarked for him a yo-yo project you can check up the meaning of that word yo-yo is uh, you know something like it looks interesting and looks uh, inviting but you know it's just it's so superficial doesn't have any weight or value but the one that keeps to that project and program that the lord has a man for him look at this in verse 26 if any man serve me let him follow me and where i am there shall also my servant be if any man serve me him will my father honor because of his presence with me because of his possession of me because of his program for me then look at acts of the apostles chapter 23 verse 11 must 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 acts chapter 23 reading from verse 11 once you realize that a must in your life is not maybe i will do it maybe i will not do it there is a plan of god imposed on you there is a purpose of God imposed on you. And you say, I must. You wake up in the morning, I must. Before you sleep at night, you remind yourself again. You take inventory. How have I done today? Of what the Lord purposed for my life, I must. And you are guided by that guiding star of must in your life then you know everything will stay in place chapter 23 of acts verse 11 and the night following the lord stood by him and said be of good cheer paul for as thou hast testified of me in jerusalem so must thou bear witness also at rome we're looking at acts chapter 6 chapter 16 acts chapter 16 verse 25 the lord said i've given you all the people that sail with you that's not the first time just association with paul in the same prison association with paul on the same stormy sea will bring protection to the rest of them acts chapter 16 verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners had them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison was shaking the foundations of your prison will shake your prison will collapse the doors will be open for you to come out all your chains and fetters that bind you they are broken in jesus name and it says the doors were open and everyone's binds were loose because of association with paul the apostle his protection of us now his promise for us hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 23 hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 hebrews 10 verse 23 let us hold fast 
the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised it will not disappoint you i said it will not disappoint you you will experience the faithfulness of god in jesus name his presence with us his possession of us his program for us is his purpose for us his protection of us his promise to us his power over us his power in us his power for us ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 ephesians 3 verse 20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or seek according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by christ jesus throughout all ages world without end and the people of god said it is confirmed in your life in jesus name the powerful presence of the savior number one is the progressive path through the storm number two is the powerful presence of the savior number three is prevailing power over all sicknesses remember our text is in mark chapter 6 mark chapter 6 and we'll see after that storm we'll see what came and you see what is coming mark chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 25 mark chapter 5 verse 25 and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years long time and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse when she heard she had heard of jesus came in the press behind and touched his garment you'll touch him for she said if i may but touch his clothes i shall be whole and straightway and suddenly and immediately and instantaneously the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague this is your own time and as you seek the lord and you touch him deliverance you touch him healing you touch him strength you touch him power you touch him breaking of the yoke you touch him miracle you touch him signs and wonders as you touch him he too will touch you i said he too will touch you he's already touched you the feeling of your infirmities and you can come to the lord and ask in hebrews chapter 4 hebrews chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 15 and verse 16 hebrews chapter 4 reading from verse 15 it says in verse 15 for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted tried like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come let us therefore come boldly boldly unto the throne of grace that we may receive obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need the lord has decided that this is the night of your making progress is the night of coaching all the things that bound you all the things that tied you down is the night of moving forward are you there i said it's your night of moving forward 
why don't you rise up you are going to touch the lord right now remember progressive path through the storm don't bother about that storm it's going to be all over and the lord is going to give you real progress and then powerful presence of the savior this is what gives us assurance his presence is possession his program his purpose his protection his promise his power and that power is working on our behalf and then as we touch him what great power is transferred into every life open your mouth and tell the lord what you need open your mouth and tell the lord what you need what you will do what you will do what you will do you have the confidence now you have the joy now you are not going to die because of any storm and your journey is not going to stop because of any storm he'll take you over he'll take you through and he will quench he will stop he will calm every storm of your life tell the lord tell the lord it's a night of praying it's a night of miracle it's a night of calmness it's a night of rest it's a night of peace peace to your soul peace to your family peace to your life peace all around you we're confident we are confident that what the lord has promised he also is able to perform Tell the Lord and claim the promise of the Lord. He grants strength. He grants healing. He grants deliverance. He grants blessing. Touch him by faith. And let him touch you by grace. Touch him by faith. And let him touch you by grace. And great will be the explosion of miracle in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, And the miracle recipient said, Lift up those hands to the air, telling the Lord, you are touching the Lord right now by faith, and he is touching you by grace. And whatever the need may be, first of all, the storm is calm in your life. And then the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the healings and deliverances, the Lord is granting you right now. All thus have come to give testimony here, your turn has come. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because we're a God of power, a God of mind, a God of purpose, and we know that your purpose and promise will never fail in any life. I pray right now, all our brothers and our sisters, boys and girls, everyone, anyone here, and all those who are listening everywhere, all those who are watching everywhere, touch everyone right now in Jesus' name silence the enemy on behalf of everyone and the storms of life trying to hinder anyone from reaching the goal i pray lord you will calm that storm in jesus name the fire burning in that family i bring an end to that fire in jesus name the conflict and the confusion in that life i bring an end to that in jesus name those tormenting spirits in that brain in that individual i command you tormenting spirits come out in jesus name and the sickness the infirmity almost wanting to claim the life of that individual in the fourth watch of the night I command you sickness, infirmity, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, everyone, every child of God, we touch you by faith. You touch us by grace. And I pray all the problems, all the storms of life that made people to be so confused right here in the skelter, bring an end to everything right now in Jesus' name. 
the miracle needed by anyone there healing needed by anyone there deliverance needed by anyone the breakthrough needed by anyone there provision needed by anyone there oh lord at this time now open the windows of heaven open your hands upon your people and shower your blessings on everyone let the rain of miracles fall rain of healings fall and rain of deliverance fall break every yoke deliver the oppressed set the captives free confirm your signs and wonders upon every life we thank you lord because we know it is done in jesus name we pray and the people of god said